Mm. We are coming into energy week. This will just start to get people thinking about what they should be doing and what they should be looking at in terms of saving money and obviously saving energy. For people like myself, you know, in their 30s who might be looking to get their own home, maybe buy or build, what sort of things would you be looking at with new bills in terms of energy saving? Hi, Sandra. Well, I guess new bills are, are maybe the easiest to, to deal with because uh, any any house being built now has to comply with Part L of the building regulations, which is um, like fully up to speed, if you like. And, and, and the goal over the next few years is that everything will be near zero energy rated. So like uh, at the County Council at the moment, for instance, we have over 400 houses up and down the county under construction at the moment. And all of them have been designed to be nearly zero energy rated. So, like, for instance, the, the heat source in all of them will be an air-to-water heating system. They've all been designed with um, good kind of thermal properties in their uh, in their design. Uh, so there's good solar gain on the south side, and, and we still use block work in the main, so they've good thermal mass to retain that heat that they, that they will draw in. They're all insulated to the highest possible standards. They're very well ventilated as well. Well, we still use natural ventilation because uh, um, they're houses, but they're insulated and ventilated to, to the highest possible level. And then, of course, the, the, the new thing uh, really for new builds in these times were, uh, is they all have a source of, of, of good renewable energy um, in their efficiency. So, for instance, all of our houses now would have solar panels on the roof that would um, look after the hot water in the house and they would also have photovoltaic panels that would add to the uh, electricity generation in the house. Like that's us at a bigger level building big estates where anybody now going to build a house, uh, as you say, somebody like yourself, has to address all those issues in part L of the building regs. So that will immediately be part of your of your your spec in building your house. And with the likes the, of the panels then, I mean, how new are they? You know, um, I mean, what, like how long ago, I suppose, well, did you start seeing uh, them become a regular over feature? Last, over the last couple of years, really, you know. Okay. And, I mean, they, they, they're not quite viable just yet to, to power a whole house. But what we found is for hot water, they, they work very well. You know, they're, I have they're, heard that actually. Yeah. They're economically viable. So I'm sure a time will come when they'll be super duper and able to run run an entire house's needs. But uh, for the moment, they're used mainly for hot water purposes. And, that, and that's working very well. And just in layman's terms, I mean, we don't live in a very hot country. We would, you'd perceive that we don't get an awful lot of sunshine. So how does that work? It's amazing to, how much latent sunshine there is there as well. And what I mean by that is you know, how much sunshine can get through the clouds. Even on an overcast day, you'd be amazed at the performance of a solar panel. Okay. And as long as they're designed to the right size and obviously orientated in the right direction, they will substantially add to the performance of, of, of every house. Really. A bit like anything, the initial ones were very expensive. It was only somebody who was very committed. But, but these days now, that they've been proven to be a very inherent part of the, of the energy generation of a house. You know. So moving away from new builds to somebody who might have an existing property and wants to upgrade it, what would the options there be? And go back to the County Council, but you know, this is almost unseen work we do because no private developers are doing this but as everybody knows we have a, a substantial stock of, of old council houses and we have a huge energy efficient upgrade program going on right across the county every year where we retrofit and upgrade about 120 houses a year um, we, we we get funding from the department uh, purely for that task and that's across the county i assume is it across the county and houses of, of all you know we we tend to do the poorer ones first really. i was so just about to ask how are they they'd selected be in all yeah. different conditions and and obviously each case is individual so it it, it you know, you, you you can't have a standard solution because it depends on the on how good or bad the individual property is to know what you can do. Okay. But like um, the type of work would be new windows and doors, new roof insulation. We pump the cavities, dry lining, external insulation in some cases, new heating systems. You know, where we might change to an air to water system from a from a, a solid fuel or an old stove. We'd upgrade stoves and boilers, and then. Right down to simple little various building details like where you'd seal drafts and gaps. You'd fit thermostats to improve the, the control of the heating systems. Lag pipes in the attics. Very simple things, but they, they make a difference, especially to houses that are performing very badly. You know. And when you say very badly, what kind of energy rating are you talking? Well, we, we can get... Uh, almost a house with no rating up to a B2, 
you know, with with just a, a mix of those um, works I've just I've just spelled out to you. It obviously mm. would be different in each case, but we we aim to get them all up to a, a, at least a BB or, and that hugely improves the quality of of the environment of those houses internally. You know, okay. the people are delighted when we do that work. Yeah, and just building on the uh, the idea of the energy ratings as well, you often see in a listing bear exempt. Can you tell me what that means? That would be listed or older properties that, you know, the interiors would be a, a, of a nature that they wouldn't be partial to, to doing the necessary work to bring them up to, you know, to meet the current standards, if you like. So um, that would be historic properties in the main where it, it, it would be, you know, you couldn't externally insulate them or whatever. And are your options very limited then with that kind of property? Yes, they are, I guess, you know, or, or very expensive if you have to go to uh, to some unseen solution, if you like, or what, you know, okay. you have to upgrade other areas to, to counteract, you know, uh, in a church, if you have to keep the old windows, for instance, that we see Right, play, yeah. You know, but um, it is like it stems from an infrastructure, you know, yes, kind of day one issue, really. It yeah. does. Okay, I've always I've just wondered about that. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult area because obviously we want to keep heritage and 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 uh, you know restore buildings as as they were. But uh, it'll be a challenge going forward, really, as to uh, how we bring them with us. You know. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I suppose especially as well if um, if people are being encouraged to buy older properties and do them yes. up, that would be yes. something they would come up against. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you you, you your classic. You know, single tower castle <laughs> would mm. be a classic. You know, <laughs> people are now converting them into to live into them. Well, that that's obviously going to be a, a very expensive exercise to to make them comfortable to live in. You know, for the listeners who are not in the position where they're you know buying a new build or building or upgrading a property, what can they do sort of day to day to improve energy efficiency around the home? Well, there are very simple things you can do, Sandra, without spending very little if any money and uh, you know you'll have read these in the Sunday magazines or whatever and they all sound very simple but in every case they can knock 10 15 20 euro a year off your bill and they all add up so obviously little things like turning off your lights when you're not in the room or unplugging devices uh, when they're not in use and that's a common one you know people leave chargers in and and you know and, and with with energy bills now starting to go up all of these little things make a difference. I think all of these things, are, like where the where their general checklist, you work out your best way of making them work in in your own lifestyle. You know, and I mm. think that's what the the advice is general. But then you work out what what version of it suits you best. I think is is the yeah. best advice to give to anybody. Because I mean, I think in in our house certainly, and I'm sure in many houses, leaving things on standby is probably one of our biggest. That's right. We all do it. You know, and and it, it, as I say, that that's that's twenty or thirty euro at the end end of the year you could have spent on something else you know but, but, yeah, you'd never think it yeah, exactly exactly and then simple things like um you know installing thermostats so you better control over your heating system turn down your heating by a degree and you'll save you know x amount every year these won't change your energy rating but they will change your energy efficiency that's right they'll reduce your your, your co2 emissions and your carbon footprint even to, I often say simple things to good heavy drapes or curtains, you know, uh, for 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 the evening time. You would be amazed how much um, heat that they will retain within the room. I would and never have it, thought of that. <laughs> well, and then if you have if you have curtains and blinds, it, it, it's a double layer. You know, it all helps. You know, mm. a very simple one: rugs on cold floors. If you have a tile floor or even a timber floor. The heat gain of a rug will just retain, hold that heat and, of course, also be warmer for you underfoot than if it just goes straight to a cold surface. You get a lot of people and they back up a sofa against the radiator because it's the best part of the room to put it. But, what, of course, what you're doing is you're stopping the heat spreading itself around the room. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're very simple, almost too simple to, to, to say to people, but they are, they, they, you know... They actually do make a difference. I think everybody just should look at their own room and you will find two or three little simple techniques that, you know, will improve your your energy efficiency in the room, both the heat going around the room and the heat remaining within the room. You know, check your attic insulation. You might have moved boxes up there and, and the insulation moved when you did. You know, little simple things. Kitchen appliances, make sure the dishwasher is full every time you load it, you know. Only boil the amount of water you need in the kettle as opposed to filling it up and then just making a single cup of tea. Mm, I was surprised by how how big um, 
how big a user of electricity the kettle is. That yeah, one always absolutely. astounds me. <laughs> Especially when you think uh, of somebody boiling the kettle, absolutely. forgetting, boiling it again a minute later. <laughs> that, that's right. And, and uh, clothes dryers are similar, you know. So, uh, you know, again, people put them on often for, for more than is needed. You know, mm. they, they set it by the timer rather than knowing when the clothes will be dry. And do you know, um, there was one I heard, actually. It was um, somebody suggested putting your clothes out for an hour, even if it's not, like, typically a dry day, but that yeah. the bit of air circulation will require less drying then. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, I suppose people, that doesn't really work for a really rainy day. <laughs> but some people, like, say from a certain month on, will say, right, everything goes in the dryer now, as opposed to you know, checking the, looking at the window and saying, well, actually, it's a fine day in November or a fine day and I can hang them out today. You know, mm, yeah. uh, they auto- automatically say, I'm not going to hang out clothes again until next April or whatever. I think it's fear of the rain. Very simple things, <laughs> you know, but they, they, they all make, they all turn, turn into euros at the end of the year, you know. It doesn't have to be new build construction. It can start with very simple things in your own living room and kitchen. They'll make a difference uh, to your energy bill at the end of the year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sandra.